could join us for this, a very unique service, a blue year, a new year. A service for remembrance as well as hope. Because one thing, we all have stories in 2020. Stories of death and passing. That's the story of one family. They received a call from the long-term care facility on December 20th that their mother was all of a sudden developing a cough, but nothing to worry about. We'll just keep a close eye on her. December 21st, they received another phone call. This time, their mother was having a hard time with breathing. But again, we'll keep a close eye on her. Then the very next day, December 22nd, they got the call that their mother now had a fever and now tested positive for COVID. December 23rd, another phone call. This time to say that their mother was having a hard time opening her eyes. December 24th, Christmas Eve, their mother passed away from COVID. And for many, she would be another statistic of the many who had died in Canada from COVID-19. But she is no statistic to her family. She has a story. She immigrated here from Vietnam. And she was so happy to call Canada her home. And she was so pleased to be able to raise her children in safety. Away from the war that was happening in Vietnam, she truly embrace Canada as her own. They've had a funeral in amidst the lockdown. And only though that 10 people could be at that funeral, if there wasn't this lockdown, the family said that 
funeral home would be filled with so many people because their mother touched so many people's lives. One story from COVID-19. Then, the Pickering Farming Market closed recently due to COVID-19. This farmer's market had been open for 50 years. It started off in the community of Pickering being a place where farmers could come to sell their local goods. But over time, it expanded. That you could buy goods from all over the world. It was a place where people would gather week after week after week. In 2020, this farmer's market experienced incredible loss. The losses compiled over $1 million. And this is the week. When the second lockdown came into effect, it was the final nail in the coffin. The Pickering Farming Market will open no more. That's the story of one of many businesses, many restaurants that have been forced to close to say goodbye to their customers forever. Sad story in 2020. Then, there's the stories of people experiencing depression. One such story is a daughter who's been going to visit her father at a long-term care facility since March. They follow all the protocols, the protective glass that's in between them, but something she's noticed about her father over these nine months is this. He's getting more and more depressed. You see, he's a social person. He likes being in and amongst his community at his long-term care facility, whether it's programs, whether it's meals, but much of the time, he's been isolated in his own room. It has had this effect on him. Depression. It's getting worse and worse, and the daughter's more and more fearful. And many people are experiencing depression through COVID-19. And as we know, as we come to this time of year, depression intensifies, doesn't it? As the days become longer, as there's less sunshine, in a typical year, 6% of the population experiences severe depression at this time of year, and another 15% milder depression. But that number's going to increase because of the many stories of COVID-19. And then, a story that we're hearing so often is people are experiencing more and more debt as a result of COVID. You see, many people had little savings but a lot of debt before COVID started in March. And many people have had to rely on government assistance. Some people have had their hours reduced, but the bills keep piling and adding up and up. It is having an effect on families. You know the effects when people have money problems. People begin to argue. They become abusive. Relationships break down. It is believed that about 60% of middle income earners are struggling in debt right now. With COVID-19, that number may increase and increase. These are the stories that have been prevalent this year. And that is why we need to recognize this as a blue year. But the journey into this new year with hope, that is the gift of this service. And let us begin on a journey tonight. A journey that will begin acknowledging the pain and the loss in the blue of this year and a journey that moves us towards hope in 2021. We begin with acknowledging the bleakness of this past year with this hymn in the bleak midwinter.
In the bleak midwinter, it acknowledges some of the feelings that we've been having through 2020. But now we journey towards a liturgy of hope. When we come to the end of a year, we often look back upon it with thankfulness. We look back on this year feeling blue with grief, loss, worry, and pain. We finish this year weary from all we have experienced as a result of COVID-19. We come to this service seeking rest, uplifting, and hope entering 2021. We know God's holy presence is with us now as we move ahead into this new year. May God's resilient love and grace never let go of us into this new year. A time for remembering what has made us blue. We see the candles that are here. And during the season of Advent, those candles represented hope peace, joy, and love, with the Christ candle in the middle. Tonight, we have blue candles around the Christ candle. And each candle represents something we've lost and experienced through 2020. I want to take you on a journey of remembrance. I begin by lighting this first blue candle. And what this blue candle represents is the people we have lost this year. Oh yes, usually when we look at the end of the year, we look at the people who have passed away, and yes, we want to remember those people who are so near and dear to us. But we've lost touch with many other people this year that's given us feelings of sadness. Who are those people? Some are friends. Think of those friends that you would get together with for a coffee. Or maybe that you would curl with. Or you would go out with once a month for lunch. Or those colleagues at work. You know, you would walk past their desk and stop for a conversation. Or at lunch, you'd share and laugh together. Or those people that were acquaintances, but you'd run into at maybe some of your familiar places, like my coffee shop. I miss them. Or think of the other people that you've lost close contact with. And yes, you maybe call them once a month. And what do you have to say to each other? What's new? I'm not doing well. There's not much new happening with me. How about you? Nothing new happening with me either. And the conversations you used to have that went for so long are so short. We pause. And I want you to remember, as we take a time of silence, the losses that you are grieving from being in touch and contact with people in your life. Yes, we have lost contact with people in 2020. But our second candle represents lost experiences. Oh, how many experiences have we lost out on due to COVID-19? Think of birthday celebrations or anniversaries. Some people have had to cancel their weddings. How many graduations? were canceled for our young students and our high school students and our college students. And then there were the trips and the vacations. Trips that you had planned for, that you were looking forward to, but yes, you had to cancel them. And then think of sports and activities that maybe had to be put aside, like curling. Like maybe golf, 
kids basketball, kids hockey, so many events and celebrations, and of course, church. Being able to come each and every Sunday to church. For many of you, you've had to put that aside. So the second candle. We think of the many things, the many experiences that we have lost out on in 2020. We take time to pause and remember. The first candle represents the people we have lost. The second candle represents the experiences we have lost. The third candle focuses on our feelings, our emotions. Because here's the reality. We say to ourselves, I'm doing okay. I'm fine. I can handle the grief. I can handle the loss. I'm coping. But we're hiding our true feelings. Because let's be honest, all of us have had feelings of grief and loss and disappointment this year. If we're being truly honest, it hurts, doesn't it? It doesn't seem fair at times. It's very disappointing when we have to say no to certain things or have to miss out on experiences that bring us joy. We need to acknowledge that pain, that suffering. So let's take a moment and truly dig deep into your feelings and identify how it's made you feel. Missing out on being with certain people, missing out on certain experiences, because the journey towards healing comes with acknowledging our true feelings. Let's pause and think about our true feelings. We move to the fourth candle. Yes, it's another blue candle. And here's the interesting thing. Candles in colors have a significance in the spiritual sense. And blue, in a spiritual sense, represents God's divine attributes and qualities. And as we light this fourth candle, it's a reminder to us of many of God's attributes and qualities. What are those qualities? Love. A love that never fails. Or how about wisdom? Being all wise and all knowing. Or how about God being all powerful? That nothing is impossible for God. Or how about God being sovereign? That he is in complete control. You see the journey that is leading towards hope. It begins with recognizing the losses with people in our lives. It continues with recognizing the lost experiences. It continues with identifying our own feelings. And then as we move towards hope, it begins with identifying God's attributes and qualities. Because when we do that, it is then that we truly understand Christ in our lives. That God's love could not just remain in heaven. That God wanted to show us his unfailing love by coming to us as Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And as we make Jesus Savior and Lord over our lives, doesn't it incredible? incredible thing happened to us. We feel love. We get meaning back to our life. We get purpose. We realize that Jesus is not just a friend, but he's always there for us to provide, to care, to uplift us and encourage us. Remembering. We've taken the time to remember. And as you see, it's helping to move us from blue to feelings of hope. Let us continue this service of Blue Year and a New Year with this special music, a very powerful piece by Julie that's called Christ With Us. Stop. 
was a very powerful piece and we thank you for her permission that she has given and provided for us to show that to you today.
We're moving towards hope. And here we are. We're going to stay in the little town of Bethlehem. And this is a reminder to us in this song what God does. Bethlehem was least of the leading cities of Judah. But what did God do? He chose Bethlehem for a Savior to be born. And as we see, it reminds us that God always takes notice. It is always there to uplift us. O oh, little town of Bethlehem, let us sing, let us enjoy, let us be inspired. Nothing there at all, she said, except a small 
jar of olive oil. Elisha said, Go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars, and as each is filled, put it to one side. She left them and shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her and she kept pouring. When all the jars were filled, she said to her son, Bring me another one. But he replied, There is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil, and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, normally as we come to the end of the year, we acknowledge our losses. In some years we have very minimal loss. In other years we experience significant losses. For instance, a year of significant loss might be the death of a spouse, or a child, or a sibling, or some dear friends in our lives. It's never easy, is it? in a year of loss. Or maybe a year of loss for us is the loss of health, cancer. Or maybe with age, our health begins to decline. We're not able to do some of the things we used to be able to do. And it's a loss in our life. Or maybe that loss is retirement. You look forward to retirement, you finally retired, and you realize you feel empty. There's a loss. Something that brought you so much fulfillment, being at work, being connected with people, and now you feel alone at loss. Yes. Or the loss of a job. Never easy, is it? In a year that we lose income, that we lose work. That's a typical and a normal year. But 2020 is no typical year. Yes, some people have experienced those losses, but this is a year where everybody, everybody, has experienced loss of some shape or form. Think of the losses that we have experienced since the middle of March. A loss of freedom. As we went into lockdown, and we were told that we had to restrict ourselves when we went out. Only go out for essential needs and items. Don't go and visit family and friends. A loss of certain freedoms and privileges. As we identified with one of the candles, the loss of routine and experiences. Going to the coffee shop to meet our friends. Going out for lunches with friends. Going over to families. Going for social outings. Yes, loss. Loss of sports and activities. Seasons all of a sudden shut down for kids' sports, be it basketball or hockey or soccer and so on. A loss. And for some, businesses being shut down. Stores and restaurants being shut down. And a loss of income, a loss of employment. All oh, the losses have reached all of us in 2020. And the reality, as we pointed out in the candles, is this. When loss hits, it takes away from us. It begins to deplete us. It hits us, maybe financially, but it definitely hits us emotionally and sometimes spiritually. And as we are hit more and more by loss in our lives, we tend to feel empty. Empty spiritually empty emotionally, and at times empty physically. It's not an easy situation that we find ourselves in as we come to the end of 2020 and enter into 2021 with the same lockdown. But, here's the good news. When we feel empty, when life takes so much away from us, one of the powerful things we learn in Scripture is God is always there to replenish us. And I think one of the best stories that reflects that is the story we read today of the widow who is experiencing even more loss in her life. 
So the story starts off with us learning that she had already lost her husband. Now her husband left her with considerable debt. We don't know the reason why, but there she was with a lot of debt. And even though she had her two sons, it seems that whether they were farmers, whether they sold mercantile, whatever it was, they couldn't repay the debt. The bills just kept adding up and up. Well, in those days and times, something that creditors could do was this. If you couldn't pay your debt, they could demand that you would have to sell them their sons into slavery to pay off the debt. And that is exactly what this creditor wanted to do. Now let's think about this woman's situation. She'd already experienced the loss of her husband. And now she was about to experience the loss of her two sons. And these sons represented security and stability for her, especially as she aged in life. With the loss of two sons, she'd be forced to beg for a living. She wouldn't have the safety and security of her sons to look after her. Yes. As she approached the prophet Elisha, here is a woman on empty. Here is a woman experiencing incredible loss in her life. But she reached out to God's servant, Elisha. Because remember, her husband was a prophet, or served under the prophets at the time. So, she reached out and asked Elisha and shared the situation with him. So Elisha said, I want to help. What do you have? And do you remember her response? I have nothing. The only thing I have in my house is a flask with some oil in it. That's not much. That's not much at all. But that's the only thing she had. No wonder she couldn't pay off her debts to her creditor. But Elisha said to her, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to your neighbors and ask them for jars, not just some. Get as many jars as you possibly can. So that's what she did. And after she got the jars, Elisha gave her this instruction. Now I want you to go into your home with your sons, close the door, and begin to pour the oil into those jars. But do you remember what she started with? One little flask of oil. It doesn't appear like much, especially if she brought in many, many jars that she borrowed from the neighbors. But she acted in faith. She followed through on God's prophet's instructions. She began with the first jar. She got that little flask of oil and poured it into the jar. And before she realized it, the first jar was filled to the brim. So she put it aside and asked her sons to bring the second jar. And the same thing happened. The second jar filled to the brim as well. And there was that little flask still pouring oil. So they went to the third jar, and the fourth jar, and the fifth jar. And the same thing happened. The jar filled right to the brim. And they continued this until they got to the final jar. And as soon as they filled the final jar, there was no more jars for them to get. Finally, the oil stopped flowing. So now, she went back to the prophet Elisha and he said, here's what I want you to do now. I want you to go and sell that oil and pay off all your debts and you will still have enough to live on. Now oil was very valuable back then. It not only was used for cooking, it was also used for lamps as well as heating. So you can imagine, this would be so easy for her to sell. And that's exactly what she did. And she not only was able to pay off her creditor, she now had enough to live on to support her two sons. Do you remember the situation she started in? Having lost a husband. About to lose two sons. About to experience a life of poverty. And what did God do? He replenished her emptiness. Now, she was no longer filled with sadness. She was filled with joy. She was no longer filled with despair. She was filled with hope. She no longer was filled 
with an uncertain future now. She had a comfortable future ahead of her. Why? Because God replenished what life had taken away from her. And that is such a powerful lesson, isn't it? Because you and I have had so much taken away from us in 2020. COVID has taken away contact with people, experiences in our lives. It has left us feeling empty at times. And do you see this boss? Do you see how empty it is? That represents our emptiness from what we have gone through in this year. And you might be saying to yourself, Dean, I'm not quite empty. That I've got some hope still in me. Okay. So you got some hope still in you. Is this what your life looks like right now? Or is this what your life looks like right now? Sure. There's a little hope in your life. But where's your focus as you look at this box? Is it on the what? What little hope you have? Or is it on the emptiness? All the hope that is missing in your lives. What God did for this woman, He does for us. When we reach out to God just like this woman did, here's the amazing thing that God does. He begins to replenish our emptiness. It begins to fill us with such things like hope, and joy, and peace, and happiness, and contentment. And before we know it, it begins to fill and fill and fill, doesn't it? And before we know it, we have a new perspective in life. God is the emptiness. All of a sudden, we're beginning to focus on everything that God has given back to us in our lives. That is what we have to look forward to. Yes, COVID has taken so much away, but hasn't God been good despite it? As you look back over this year, there's been probably many times when God has been there for you to take away that empty feeling. Can you remember the times he provided for you? Can you remember the times he reached out and showed his care to you? Can you remember the times that somebody called when you were feeling lonely and you just felt uplifted? Can you remember the times that God answered a prayer in your life in this past year and all of a sudden you were refilled? Or can you remember the times when all of a sudden a song was placed on your heart, you began singing and felt joy again? Or can you remember watching a service like this? Or some church service, and all of a sudden you heard a message, and all of a sudden God was in despair, and it was replaced with joy and happiness. That's what God does. He knows when we're empty. And if we truly embrace Him, if we truly reach out to Him, He'll be there to replenish us with the hope and joy that we need. And if this visual isn't enough, and if those reminders of the ways that God replenishes is not enough, maybe this powerful story will be what reminds you that no matter what loss you have gone through this year, that you have hope as you enter 2021 because God will be there for you. Just before Christmas, I was asked to pray for a little baby who had just been born. This baby was born premature and was not doing very well in the early stages. We prayed. And many others were praying as well. Christmas Eve, as we were about to pray, the great-grandmother of this baby was here at the service. And just as we were about to pray, her phone went off. And the interesting thing was, it was all in silence. It still went off. She went out to answer it as we were praying. 
She could hear us praying for her little great-granddaughter. And when she came back in, she had the greatest news. That they were just going to release her from the hospital. Her great-granddaughter was coming home. The granddaughter was happy, her son was happy, she was filled with joy. And as I talked with her after the service, she just looked up and said, thank you, God. She was so filled with thankfulness, because what did God do? Here was a family who was feeling emptiness and worry and concern. They reached out for prayer. And God did what God does so well, replenishes us when we are empty. That is the hope that we carry into this new year. So if there's ever a time that you're feeling down, that you're feeling empty, remember what to do. Reach out to God, and He will do what He is so good at. Replenish, fulfill, fill you back up in ways that will be a true blessing. God bless, and amen. We continue our service, as I said, we're acknowledging our blueness, but we're journeying towards hope, aren't we? I want to invite you now to enjoy this special music that the Dean, Amy, and Janet Franklin are providing for us. Love Knows No Borders. It isn't that a powerful title to a very powerful piece, because we might wonder, okay, Dean, I hear what you said, but does God love to reach out to me? Yes. Because God's love knows no borders. Let us listen. Let us be uplifted.
working so hard to provide that for you. And my thanks and appreciation because I think it was the right piece for this important service. Let us come before God, shall we, in a prayer of remembering and hope. Let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, here we are on the portal of a new year. And as we come to the end of 2020, it's been a year unlike any other. Little did we know as we began 2020 that we would experience nine months of a pandemic. It's been hard. It's been difficult. It's taken so much away from each and every one of us. And in our true honesty, we haven't liked it. It's been hard. It's left us with sadness, it's left us with despair, it's left us with frustration, it's left us with worries and fears. All feelings that bring us down, not up. All feelings that put us at this point of feeling hopeless. But that is where you come in, God. Because with you in our life, nothing is impossible. As the blue candle reminds us, you have so many attributes, God, that gives us hope and gives us the trust we need to keep going and persevering, to know that you are an all-loving God, to know, God, that you are aware of every one of our needs and that you assure us that you will provide for us, that when you see us down, you're there to replenish us. Whether it's that phone call, whether it's that song in our hearts, whether it's that answer to prayer, whether it's that gentle nudge, whether it's just that whisper in our ear. You're always there for us, God, and we just give our thanks and praise because we know, God, as we heard in the stories at the beginning of this service, so many people have lost loved ones due to COVID, and each day we are experiencing more and more death. We pray for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones through 2020. We ask God that your hand be upon them and you give them the strength and comfort they need. May your presence be with them. We pray for the sick. We know the numbers keep rising each day and the numbers will probably continue to increase with Christmas activities with people going on trips, even though they're told not to, and so on and so on. Be with the sick, God. Help them to recover. Help them to take this seriously and do whatever they need to to stay in safe places and not spread this virus. We pray for the businesses that are shut down at this time. We know that many on the verge of closing, we just pray about that you'll provide for their needs. Help them to get through this time so they can reopen, have their bills paid, have their customers returned. Be with those businesses that are on the verge of closing, God. Give them hope. We pray for those who are depressed. We know that many have been left with depression through the losses, the loneliness, the isolation. Be with them, God. Uplift their spirits. Remind them that you are always present for them. That you are there for them no matter what. We pray for our children. None of us want our children to experience this. But this is the reality that they're being raised in. And we ask God that what they're experiencing now won't affect them negatively. That like the people of the depression, like the people of the war, that the hardness of this time will give them a strong foundation beneath them and help them as they move forward. God, we enter this new year of 2021. We don't know what waits ahead of us. We are all hoping for a vaccine. We're all looking forward to the time that we'll be able to sit in a chair wearing a mask, roll up a sleeve and get the vaccine and return to our normal lives. But until then, keep us hoping. Keep us encouraged. Keep us believing. Let us know 
that we are always in your constant care. We offer this prayer in Christ's name. Amen. We continue our journey towards hope with It Is Well With My Soul. Go now in peace. 